So good evening, everybody. Great to have you here. Um, we've been looking forward to this event. Um, I suppose it's almost like a, it's a new page for us, really, stretching our, our wings out, particularly across the region. So we're delighted to welcome you all from the seven counties of uh, the Dublin and Mideast region for the Sustainable Energy Community Programme. My name is Gavin Hart and I work with Kodima um, and I am a SEC County Mentor in Dunleary Rathdown. I just want to go through a few housekeeping things for the start of uh, before we kick off, just to let you know everyone that this is this event is being recorded. Um, and uh, so that's uh, we will be sharing those um, slides and uh, the recording on the Kodima website. And we let you know in a couple of days when that's available. So if you have colleagues or friends who couldn't make it but would like to find out more, you can pass on that information to them. Um, as with, I suppose we're all starting to know now with Zoom and online events, background noise can be quite distracting, particularly for the presenters. So if you could keep your microphones muted, that would be great. And to bring your attention to the chat uh, box, um, we're quite happy to take comments and questions and, and feedback from, uh, from our, our guests. And um, if we don't get a chance to answer them, we'll certainly follow up with them. So please do uh, leave your, your views there because we really do want to hear your questions and comments. We might also take a photograph, if that's okay, towards the end for our social media. Um, so uh, Suzanne has asked me that you all have your best smiles on. So without further ado, I'd like to just maybe introduce the agenda for tonight's um, talk. We've got a great lineup of, of, of speakers. Um, we're going to give an introduction to the SEC program from Julie Farley in SEAI. So she's going to give you that uh, top level perspective. And then I'm going to give you, I suppose, an insight to the work that we're doing um, in the Dublin and Mideast region, um, particularly in our links with local authorities. Um, we then are delighted to have Caroline Corrigan from Meath County Council, who has been a stalwart supporter of the programme um, uh, for a couple of years now. And she's going to give the local authorities perspective of the programme. And then we have a case study um, from Ringsend in County Dublin with Megan uh, Custler. So that's to hear it from the communities themselves. And then hopefully we'll have some time for questions and answers. Um, please do put your questions into the chat box because we will kind of deal with those first. But then hopefully if we have a bit of time towards the end, we will take comments and questions from the floor. So look, that's our run on for the, for the, for the day. Um, I hope it is of value to you. Um, I think this is a very timely initiative. The Sustainable Energy Community Programme is a programme that's coming of age, really. And uh, your interest in it and your support uh, in communicating throughout the, the Dublin and Mideast region would be most appreciated from, from our point of view. So we'll kick off, please, if we could have Julie Farley from uh, Sustainable Energy Ireland, um, SEAI, she's going to give an introduction to the programme. Yeah. So thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks, Gavin. Um, yeah, just want to share my screen. There. Can you all see that? It's coming up now. There we go. Brilliant. Um, it's working. There we go. So I work in SEI on the Sustainable Energy Communities Programme. And the aim of this programme is to develop communities. So it's about bringing people together, those active citizens, giving a space for them to come and learn and really take a handle of their own energy use in their area. So the SEC programme was established in 2015. And so far, we've over 550 uh, communities across Ireland, all of different ranges and levels and interests, but all with a focus on sustainability, which is fantastic. So in the SEC program, we uh, break it up into three areas. So we say the journey is about learning, planning and doing. So the learn stage is about you deciding to come together with your neighbours or the people you work with to join the SEC network as a community. 
and you'll be joining with the other 550 members. So as soon as you join, this is when the SEI supports open to you, where you get your mentors and any other technical supports that you may need to help you on this journey. And then the second part is the plan. So this is the area I work on most. So planning is all about understanding where you are and where you need to go. So we call it the energy master plan. And SEI give 100% funding of up to 25,000 euros for communities to undertake this piece of work. So it's about identifying the baseline energy use. So how many people in your area are using gas? How many are using oil? How many are traveling to work? How many are cycling to work? Who has a diesel? Who has a petrol? All those things that make up your community so you can understand your energy use. This grant can also be used to carry out home energy audits. So your be yours. And also the important bit of it is to identify the opportunities you as a community could do going forward. And then the third step is the do. So this is, you know, you've, you've learned, you've come together. So now what's the right grant for you? Where should you go? Where are the supports? And being a community means you're open to receiving more supports than SEI than if you were coming by yourself just as a homeowner. And just to flag that the SEC program will be launching a pilot scheme this summer specifically for people within the SEC network. And um, so that's definitely one to watch. So just to give you an overview, because there's so many things I find, you know, directives, plans, policies. So like, how do they fit in? So for us, it is you've the energy citizen, the person at the bottom who wants to do something. And the SEC program is a space for them to really come and in, engage and, and a, a place for them to do that. And our remit is given for the SEC program under the energy white paper that came out in 2015. And with a real focus for the first time ever on the energy citizen. And this, of course, feeds into the climate action plan and the actions there about communities and how communities can really help us achieve our national targets, which falls into our European directives and then the COP for the sustainable energy goals. So you can really see how, you know, the small program really grows out quickly. And then just to give you an overview of our mentor program. So I think this mentor program really makes the SEC program unique. Once you join, you get your mentor. So we have 31 mentors across the local authority areas um, for every SEC that signs up. And it's fantastic. So people like Gavin and Katia to help you along this journey. Um, so for your area, we've Dublin City, Dunleary Rat Down, Fingal, South Dublin, Kildare, Mead, Wicklow. And then those mentors also have regional mentors that they can go to for support as well. Those um, regional mentors are in um, the four counties of Ireland. And then at the top of that is SEI, so myself and my colleagues, Ruth and Quiva. So that's how it's structured so you can see how the supports work. So we have noticed that the local authorities have been fantastic in coming and wanting to support the communities more. Um, in Mead, Kildare and Wicklow County Council, they are currently offering uh, financing for communities who want to undertake their energy master plan. So because our grants and SEI are paid retrospectively, this means that sometimes communities have to take out loans to bridge that gap before we can pay them back. Um, but you know, the local authorities have really stepped up here and are doing that for them. And it really has fantastic benefits. It means you know, it takes out the need to get a loan and pay interest on it. Um, but it really also helps, you know, the communities and the local authorities build up that relationship even further. Um, I also just wanted to flag that the there's a new pilot called the MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding, that SEI have established with the Atlantic Seaboard in the North Carrow. And um, this is very similar to what Meath, Kildare and Wicklow are already doing, but it does have some nuances that could be of interest to some of the local authorities. I'm happy to speak about this later. Um, but basically it means when you do sign up as a local authority to the MOU, you don't need to provide any financial documents because we've made this agreement with the memorandum. And also it allows the community to still lead on the grant, but the, the local authority to fund it. So if anyone has any interest in that later, happy to talk about it. So that is all for me. Thanks so much. Thanks, Julie. Um, so it's over to me now. I'm going to give, I suppose, a more uh, localized uh, 
story really on what we're doing in the Dublin and Mid East regions. So um, I hope I can you can see my screen there. Yeah, we can see it there, Gavin. Okay. So to get things started, um, Kodima are Dublin's energy agency, and uh, we work with the four Dublin local authorities to accelerate Dublin's low carbon transition in order to mitigate the effects of climate change and improve the lives of citizens here in Dublin. But we have stretched our wings a little bit, and we're now working with our three neighbouring counties, Wicklow, Kildare and Meath, on the SEC programme. So we're delighted to be doing that. Um, and I suppose what, what we're trying to get convey today is how that program is rolling out and the works that we're doing um, in that regard. So we are the approved regional coordinator as, um, as Julie pointed out for this Dublin and Mideast region. There are four regions in the country and our role is to provide that mentoring service that she mentioned. It's all part of SCAI's community energy program. I, I like to think of it as like there's two sides of a coin. There's the, there's the sustainable energy community, which is something that we're doing. And then there's on the other side of that, there's the community energy grants. And I suppose those two programs are, are kind of, they complement each other. We build up communities from the ground, give them capacity and skills and understanding to be able to do projects and draw down the grants. So these programs complement each other and we are primarily looking after the sustainable energy community element of it in the Dublin and Mid-East region. As Julie said, there are now over 500 communities in the network throughout the country and that's growing every day. And it's really exciting to see this dynamic growth in sustainable energy communities throughout the country. I mean, it's really quite rapid in its uptake. And uh, that is a signal, I think, to people like yourself, to elected representatives, that there are people showing interest in this. This is becoming a movement. And I think it, it, that, is, that is a critical message, I think, that we would like to communicate today. So here in the Dublin and Mideast region, our role is to provide support to our own home counties, Fingal, Dublin City, South Dublin and Dunleary, but also then our surrounding neighbours, Meath, Kildare and Wicklow. We have about 130 SECs now in our region. And again, that is growing strongly. We had, uh, I think, nearly 30 people registered with us last year. You know, when we were all working online, that's a fantastic interest in the program. So what we're seeing, and SCAI would support this, is a, is a, is a really almost like an exponential growth in the program. People are really showing an interest at a grassroots level. From our point of view, our role is mentoring. So we are here to give supports to communities. We, we give them goals and coaching, guidance and training, motivation, knowledge, support, and try to target them towards success, to feel that they can actually be successful in rolling out a viable, local, sustainable energy community. So that's really our job, really, to look after these little communities, these, these community groups, to give them guidance, independence, non-biased sort of help and assistance to build their confidence. And I'd just like to introduce you to our mentors now. So I'm here in Dunleary Rathdown. Um, and then down the, down the road from me in County Wicklow, we've got Simon Whelan. Um, and then on the other side of the river, up in Fingal, we've got Eric Dennis. Then heading out towards County Meath, we've got a, a well-seasoned SEC campaigner in his own right. We've got uh, Philip McCormack, who's looking up in Batterstown there. Um, and then down in County Kildare, we have Emer Conway, who also has a great sort of grassroots understanding of the programme. And then moving into South Dublin, we have Raoul Empey and Conor Malloy. And then into Dublin City, into the thick of it, we have Jared Doherty. So we have a great team, really. And that's, that's from our point of view, it's really important. We work well together as a team. There's great sharing of experience amongst the mentors. You know, we, we can look to each other for help and support at, 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 at our level. But then, you know, we can share that support down to communities and into the SECs as they are emerging in our individual counties. So that's the sort of, that's, that's the SEC program that's putting faces on the people really who are, who are there to help you and to help communities grow in individual counties. 
But then we also have um, fostered uh, relationships with our local authorities. So Kodima like has a historical place as the energy agency for the four Dublin local authorities. So there's a very strong relationship there. And then they inherited really a very healthy relationship with Wicklow, Kildare and Meath. So we actually now have active participation from all seven local authorities. So they've all signed up to the programme. They're all actively engaged and partnering with the programme and Kodima is assisting them in that journey. So there, you know, there are monthly meetings now between mentors and their uh, representatives in the local authority, uh, climate action officers, environmental awareness officers, uh, like Caroline, who you'll hear her view now later on in, in the chat. So this is a really important partnership from Kodima's point of view, fostering this relationship at a county level with local authorities, communities, mentors, and the national program. So what's the context for all of this? Well, when we see it, I suppose, you know, recently we saw the recent amendment to the Climate Act, uh, the National Climate Bill. You know, that set a very uh, significant, ambitious target to reduce Ireland's emissions by 50% in 10 years and to, you know, pursue and achieve carbon neutral status like that's a hugely ambitious uh, action and 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 policy direction for ireland to to move in and then we also have the likes of the program for government commitment to uh, retrofit nearly half a million houses to a b2 standard over the next 10 years again hugely ambitious and that so that can't be done on a house by house individualized basis. It really does require us to aggregate housing together, to bring communities together, to do work of scale, you know? So that's really what the program is seeking to achieve. So there's a huge reason for this. And I suppose the benefits as we boil them down to the local community are very clear as well. You know, we're, we're going to build lower energy uh, costs for communities. We're going to make houses and community buildings more comfortable. There's opportunities to boost local employment with uh, increasing communities' energy, energy knowledge. And I think really leading from the front, um, helping communities to become leaders in sustainable energy and this sustainable transition uh, as pointed out in the policy bit, uh, uh, earlier. So it's about knitting all of that together within a package and, and a program that communities actively want to be involved in. We have two, uh, I suppose, slants to the program as we see it. We have our pathway to partnership, which is the three steps that, that, that Julie uh, introduced earlier on, the learn, plan and do. And then we also have our lead partner process, which is partnering communities with their local authority to help them and assist them to take on some of the tasks that they may not be uh, covering so well or may have difficulty in, in, in dealing with, building that relationship. So just to touch on the pathway to partnership element of it, as, Kathy, uh, as Julie pointed out, we have the Learn, Plan, Do program. Learning is about joining the network, engaging with neighbors, finding out information, you know, what is it all about? And when a community is ready, they move to partnership, which is planning, to build an energy master plan, to, to, to see what their baseline energy use is. Think of it almost like a, a little business plan, really, to, to, to launch a viable energy company, a community company, to, to carry out projects in that area so that the community can actually start to do the things that need to be done to achieve those targets that I pointed out earlier on. So this learn, plan, do, stepwise approach to the program is a really valuable uh, program for communities to, to grow with. And the mentor is there to help them along the way. Now, you as elected representatives could really get involved in this. You know, there's a great opportunity for you there to, to help us to recruit communities. So if you know people or, 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 or estates or people in your area that are looking to do things, you know, put them in our direction. We'd love to meet them. And, and, and it gives you an opportunity to reach out and find then a partnership, you know, you're great networkers. That's your job. It's getting out and meeting people. So by introducing people with skills and, and perhaps different talents in a community together, we can build strong uh, 
steering groups and little committees to get these things off the ground. And then when projects are ready to go, you can really be sort of guiding and helping and understanding the sort of the scale of, of, of what can be done. So there's really great opportunities for you as elected members to be involved in this program. The first step, as Julie said, is really about building that uh, community, you know, building a strong and robust steering group to put together a funding application to apply for the Energy Master Plan and start a partnership with SEAI to hopefully start moving out projects on the ground. When we look at stakeholders in the community, it's about really reaching out to the broad range of what a community is. So local business, residence associations, the local authority, churches, sport clubs, the public sector, community groups, industry, education centers, charitable organizations and individuals. We really need to mainstream uh, sustainable energy. You know, we need to have everyone involved in it. So it really is about building a broad coalition church of, of, of communities from the bottom up. But then when it comes to the steering group, the people that will actually get things done, we need to have people who are interested in leading out the project maybe people who have an understanding of finance or who have an understanding of energy and projects, somebody who can network well within the community, you know, with the technical skills and perhaps experience, that would be very helpful. And people who just want to get involved, building that viable little uh, steering community, uh, steering group to help establish these SECs in, in a strong and healthy way. All of this leads towards what Julie said was the master plan. This, um, this, this sort of first toe in the water to, to measure a community's energy use and to make a plan for how they might start to improve the energy performance of their community. The Energy Master Plan will help a community to do a baseline measurement of their energy use, identify local energy projects, looking at uh, business uh, and, and, and employers in the area, housing stock, we can look at transport, renewable energy opportunities, smart energy systems and energy efficiency. So it's a baseline analysis of a community's energy use with a sort of a roadmap and action plan for how they can move forward towards a sustainable energy community. SEAI, as Julie said, provide grant aid to provide to produce this energy master plan, and it comes at four different levels from between 10,000 to 25,000, depending on how much energy that community is using. So their total energy bill, that's worked out with the help of the mentor, the community can can start to learn, you know, what is the energy profile of our community and that is what the learn and plan step is to, to build a community's confidence about what their energy profile is and give them a, a deeper understanding of where they might go. So we, as I said, have the other side of the coin, which is our lead partner process. How do we link these emerging communities with the local authority to help them to do some of the things that they might find challenging? We really feel that this is a really important part of the program from our point of view. And we've been working hard now to bring all seven local authorities in the Dublin and Mideast region together to work around a template delivery of how we can actually assist communities in this way. We really think that this is a natural fit between the local authority and their local communities, particularly when there's the support in the middle coming from the skilled mentors that I introduced to, to you earlier on and an organization like Kodima who can actually offer that sort of center place between the local authority and the community to assist them to work together. We see it as a sort of a partnership of four key play players really. There's the local authority, there's the regional coordinator, there's the communities themselves, and then there's the experts, the EMP consultants, the people who will help communities to actually deliver these energy master plans. So coming up with a framework to assist communities to do this efficiently and cleverly is what we're trying to achieve here in the Dublin and Mideast region. There are definitely barriers that the communities are experiencing. Julie identified cash flow, for example, communities having to borrow money, perhaps, because the grant is retrospective. 
there are administrative issues with regards to the grants and, 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 and reclaiming those. And then there's a whole area of procurement, which can be hugely challenging for a community to take on board. You know, is this the right person for the job? Do they have the skills? Are we giving them the right brief to do the job that we want to get done? So by the local authorities and the regional coordinators coming in to assist in this, to provide that sort of foundation of administrative support with communities to get them up and started, to give them confidence, we think that the lead partner process is a really important key in really building strong and dynamic local communities. What we're trying to do is to come up with an EMP template, in other words, so we can measure uh, energy master plans against each other. So we have a, a framework within which they are developed. So a community has an idea as what they're going to get out of it, even before they begin. A clear process for identifying excellent consultants who can actually do that. So the procurement, identifying those people who can do the work and giving them a clear brief and assisting the community in identifying the kind of work that can be done and enhancing the community's opportunity to engage in it is also a critical part of what the program offers. So how do we maximize the community's involvement? And that is really a key part in it. And this will all lead to efficiencies, we hope, to make the program more efficient in its delivery. We believe this is a win-win for the local authority and for the SEC's, SEC communities. So we really do would ask you guys to help us on that journey. There's a great opportunity in this, we think, for local uh, elected reps. There's an opportunity for you here to, to act as ambassadors, to communicate the, the need for this out into your constituencies. You can work as a facilitator to help uh, put these small steering groups together, to, to, to link people together. You can act as a recruiter to help us to, to start and establish new SECs. And as a communicator, you know, what you do so well spreading the news of what's going on in the local authority and spreading that out to the grassroots so that people understand what the program is all about. It's really very simple. There are three simple steps in the program. Communities join the network. They're given a mentor and a regional coordinator and SEC, SEAI supports to get up and running. When they're ready, they apply for funding to carry out an energy master plan which gives them a blueprint, a framework, or an action plan to actually become then these viable, sustainable energy communities out into the future. As I say to people, you know, 50 or 60 years ago, there were people meeting like these SECs in parish halls and, 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 and schools all around the country, setting up these new fandangled things called credit unions. And look what has happened now. You know, here we are 60 years down the road, there is a parish in the country that doesn't have a viable credit union. I think the SEC has a similar sort of trajectory. It's planting similar seeds, a bottom-up approach to a really important challenge that is facing Irish society. So I think your part in this as, as really networkers in communities, I think have a very important role in supporting the program. And we really look forward to working with you uh, on, on our sustainable energy journey. So thanks again for your attention. And I hope you've gained a, a reasonable insight to what the program is, is all about. So that's me, my, my bit all over. I, I, I now I'm going to introduce a very good friend of mine, County Meath, Caroline Corrigan, who's going to give you, please, the local authorities' perspective on the SEC programme. Caroline, over to you. That's great. Thanks very much, Gavin. And once again, thank you for inviting me to speak um, at this. So just get my slides up. Um, I suppose I've, I've spoken at a number of these over the last few months, and I suppose they're becoming more frequent because there's greater interest in it, which is fantastic to see. But I'm really delighted that this one is for elected members because you guys as elected members are really, really important in getting this information out and, and helping us on our, our climate journey and on our climate narrative. And you might say, well, how do I know this or why am I just, just talking through my head here to our hat talking about this? And I suppose I do know, um, and I actually, I should have really included in the slide and I didn't, I was very lastminute.com as normal. But here in Mead, we actually have something very special um, that only one other local authority has, I believe is Cork City. We have a councillor led climate action uh, forum and I believe we actually have some of our members on here tonight as well. Um, so this has been in existence for the last 18 months or so and we're really all about the action stage now so we, we can actually see the difference in the chamber the way councillors talk about climate action.
climate action, how they're bringing it to their communities, you know, making it part of everyday conversation. So, it, you know, it, it really does work and councillors have a really important role in reaching out to people. You have such a large outreach compared and the local authority, the, the, I suppose the technical staff. So it's really, really important that the councillors are part of this, this process. So I suppose I just want to kind of maybe share our story, what we've done and what we hope to do, and I talk a little bit about our journey and and so forth. So I always like to include a picture of the SDGs because we're all about the SDGs now. Um, so that was the back in September on the fifth anniversary of the, uh, the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. We decided as a local authority to embrace this and, and make this part of our organization and, and what we do. So um, I've been lugging these boxes around with me for the last uh, six months. I have them behind me here as well. Um, so they're a really useful way to talk about climate and sustainable energy communities and and I, I think we really, from ourselves, we're driving the climate narrative through the SDGs because if climate's not your thing, there's another 16 SDGs that may appeal to you. And there's so many co-benefits associated with that. And I always try and pick the boxes carefully as well. So you can see I've got reduced inequalities and good health and well-being and sustainable cities and partnership there behind me as well. So they're all linked in this in this journey with the sustainable energy communities. So it's a really important part of our work. It is a big ask to do because I suppose local authorities haven't to date really embraced them, but I think it has to be part of our part of our message going forward and how we how we embrace the, the sustainable energy communities into this as well. So I suppose maybe just to start at the beginning and and um, I suppose just to say a special thanks to Gavin and to Phil McCormick, or, or, who was the first to, um, as part of Batterstown S um, SEC, who was the first um, really, I suppose, lighting a trail for everyone else there as well. But really just to acknowledge the work they've done. I mean, they approached me. This wasn't something the Mead County Council thought of. And I said, right, we'll work looking for an SEC. Um, the two lads approached me. And I suppose initially I was kind of like, oh, you know, what's this? And, you know, what? I this is all kind of new stuff to us. But, you know, they, they really put such a good case forward and showcased the benefits. I suppose I had... Um, I had confidence going forward to, to make this happen, that we would become lead partners. So I suppose, you know, they, they are very modest, but I always do like to give the for there because, you know, without them, we wouldn't be sitting here this evening we're talking about this. So we did, um, yeah, we, we met, it's a couple of years back now, we, we started. So we actually became the lead partner with the yeah, the energy map for to produce an energy master plan for Batterstown SEC. So we actually procured the consultants and we, so we were lucky, it was under the procurement threshold, so we just had to get three quotes. So we um, we did that and then we got them up and running and um, yeah, it worked really well. We paid them as they went along and then we were actually able to recoup the money back from SAA. So it didn't actually cost us anything. It cost us a little bit of time in terms of doing the procurement. We're used to doing procurement anyway, so it's, it's not a big deal for us to do it. We can do it quite quickly. And then we participate as well in an energy workshop with Dunleer SEC. So we have a very close relationship with Dunleer SEC. They've been really supportive to this, um, you know, during this process. Um, you know, we're always happy to pick up the phone to them if we have a query. We have a really good relationship with them, uh, really, really supportive. But I would say if you get the chance to do an energy workshop, please do, because it's, it's you know, there's a huge amount to be learned from it. And I'll talk maybe a bit more about the benefits towards the end of it. But if you do get the chance, you know, please Please do and we got to meet some really great people and you know we have that support network there as well so I suppose I've, I've kind of cut out a number of slides because I'm conscious of time as well so really what's next for us as well so it's to continue to support new and developing SECs and I keep joking with Philip that he's doing too good of a job because we we've had lots of them expression in, expression interest to forming an SEC so he, he is doing a great job and I suppose we want to continue to work with Philip and, and Kodima as well and then maybe we'll work with Carol on sub-regional projects as well so the Carol is the Climate Action Regional Office and uh, so we do coordinate and we do work together on different projects so there's no reason maybe why we couldn't bring SECs into that as well. Um, SDGs, um, there's a lot of anacronisms here as well, so it's, uh, ideally if we can incorporate that into a project as well, it would be fantastic, or bring the SDGs into SECs. Um, and then of course the role of the decarbonisation zones and the, the SEC. So you've probably heard a little bit about this. Uh, tomorrow is the deadline for local authorities to submit a, an area as a decarbonisation zone. Um, I suppose have a little bit of an issue with how that is described. It's it's not a people friendly um, term. And we did talk about people, how people are, you know, are part of this. So we're kind of taking a slightly different approach. We're really looking at this as from a county wide project that, you know, is, it's, it's better to tackle it as a county rather than just one area. 
in terms of economies of scale, bringing everybody on board and, and whatnot. But you are going to hear a bit more about this, I suppose, as it goes on. You know, there is that pressure to kind of, you know, have a leading and learning town to, to decarb. But the SECs will be a huge part of that. They have to be part of the narrative. And I, I suppose in terms of us having to nominate an area as such for purely for the department, not really for ourselves, you know, that did come into it in terms of what, the, you know, the benefits of the SEC and the outreach to have and so forth. So it, it has has impacted on it. And then leadership. Leadership is the really big part of it. So I suppose really part of my role here this evening as well is kind of a call to action to say it. And, and Gavin, I suppose, articulated probably better than I did in terms of benefits for everybody being involved in this. And we, we really need uh, strong leadership from local authorities, including the elected members who have that massive outreach that we don't. And I'll, I'll reference the CAF again. You know, the CAF have a, a great outreach and have been involved in different projects kind of with us, kind of small scale projects. So, you know, it, it's really, really important um, and not just in kind of the outreach but in, in terms of things like building trust and getting people involved and, and giving feedback to ourselves as well so um also, I suppose that the SECs are great opportunities to promote that that community buy-in and, and climate projects. That it's really about people instead of some maybe kind of bigger aspirational project that is is very high level. This is actually in communities and and, and getting people together and and so forth. And then there's lots of co-benefits from it as well as the SDG box behind me there kind of maybe pointed out. But it was just something actually I just wanted to touch back, back on with the Dunlear SEC workshop we did. So as part of that, we actually got to go around and see kind of the retrofits in action or the complete retrofits. So we went to the local running club and they had huge benefits and cost savings and whatever else. And then we actually got to go into people's homes. So we actually got to visit three homes that um, for, they were most, they're all kind of maybe slightly older people. And for them, the quality of life was something else. So for me, that was probably the biggest takeaway from that, that visit was not the carbon savings, greenhouse gas savings, the cost savings, carbon footprints, all this carb or this climate terminology we use. That never became meaningless when you look at actually the impact on people that they have a comfortable home to live in. And like we'd heard stories where, you know, people were, older people were spending their day bringing in sticks and coals to light a fire or people were spending the afternoon in bed because they were just so cold and they're living in one room in their house. And and from speaking to those people and actually going to visit their homes. And I mean, we, we actually, when we went in, we nearly went into every single room where we were tramping through the house up to bedrooms to look at different bits of technology and, and everything else. And they're only delighted to bring us in. But for some of them, it really was life changing. And I, I always like, to kind of share a story with the uh, one lady we went to see she has a, an underlying health condition and she doesn't sleep very well but she said it's just such a relief for her to be able to get up in the middle of the night go down to a lovely warm sitting room make herself a cup of tea read her book whatever it is and that it just takes so much of the stress from her underlying condition away from her so it's those stories really that i think kind of sold the secs from here the real value of it it's you know we do talk about emissions and everything else and it's all those kind of figures but you can't see emissions or you can't you can't really speak to people about ordinary people about emissions but if you can tell that story i think it's, it's really really important just to to see bring it back down to the, the people side of things so i suppose look i'll end by saying look it's really it is a call for action and I suppose for the for the decarbonisation zones as well like we, we certainly need you on board for that as well and um, you know that there's lots of ways you can do that and and referring back to our climate action forum as well one of our members is actually involved in TREM SEC so you know you don't you can take it to whatever level you want to get embedded in it or you can just as Gavin pointed out there's lots of different ways as well become an ambassador or, or just share information about about the, the community you want to do and acknowledge the good work they're doing so I think if you can get involved do and it is it's, it's a great community to be involved in because it is it's quite a large, large outreach you know we, we have a great working relationship with Podema and SEIA and, and the other local authorities and it's something different and it's, it's kind of a way to be creative as well and, and there's lots of peer-to-peer -peer learning as well which is fantastic we don't normally get that opportunity to do the peer-to-peer and -peer. Um, but it is it is a fantastic community and look at the more you can get involved and um, the better so that that's my hard sell for the uh to get involved and certainly it would be fantastic if we had a climate action forum in every single local authority as well and i'd say maybe to, to give a final plug to the, the climate action forum if you do want to reach out and you know the members are quite happy to tell their story and if you would like to hear more information do do reach out and uh, we're, we're happy to, to talk about that so look at that sir that's the final thing once I've, i'll end once again with the stgs <laughs> they're all over this um my email address is there do feel free to get in contact and also we have a twitter account um around climate change we try and promote it so it's a positive work that people are doing and so forth and get the correct information out there so i'm, I'm pretty sure i've probably gone over my uh, time allowance and we're behind schedule so listen thanks very much for listening to me and do get in contact if we can be of help thanks
Thanks, Caroline. No, we're not doing too bad. We're a little bit, but we're, we're, we're well within the bounds of acceptability. So thanks. That was great. Much appreciated. So now we'd like to introduce you to one of our SECs. So here we have a project in Rings End in Dublin. We have Megan Custer, who's going to give us an introduction to their work and what has been happening uh, on the ground with an SEC there. So this is the RISE community. Over to you, Megan. Now, Megan, are you still muted there? I'm just not sure if we can hear you. Yep, thanks. Um, so thanks so much, Gavin, and thanks so much, everyone, for joining. Um, I've been a volunteer with Rings and Sustainable Energy Community since the group formed in 2017. And um, I'm really happy to have this opportunity to share with you some examples of what our SEC has been up to over the past three years. So, um, the first milestone for our SEC was the completion of our energy master plan in 2019. And um, this energy master plan was funded by the SEAI stage one grant for SECs. And the EMP was a really powerful for, for our SEC because it gave us a really useful picture of all the current energy use in the community and it also gave us an ambitious and viable set of directions for the community to take actionable re reasonable steps towards participating in the energy transition so this screen grab is from our energy master plan and what you see here is some high level data about our community's baseline energy use so you can see our total energy consumption per year in kilowatt hours up in the upper left and the cost of this that's estimated to be 10.8 million euro um, and these figures take into account approximately the 4,000 dwellings um, residential dwellings in the area of the sec and 72 percent of these um, 4,000 dwellings are, are residential. So it shows the average burr rating as well in the community by kilowatt hours. And you can see here that our average burr rating is um, in Ring's End is D2. So we have room for improvement in terms of increasing the, the comfort and energy bill savings in, in the area. And the key point here really that I wanted to, to make is that the energy master plan um, just gave us a really comprehensive empirical picture of the community's current energy use. Um, and this accurate baseline knowledge of current energy use um, has been really essential then when it, when it came to start planning for efficiencies and renewables projects. So this is a screen grab from our EMP again, um, and here it's a much more granular representation based on data collected from SEAI's National Bird Database and the Central Statistics Office's 2011 census. And from this more detailed view, um, we get a rough distribution of birds across the community. And it gives a really good snapshot of the variety and spectrum of birds by small area within Rings End. And it really shows how the birds in our community reflect the predominantly mature housing within the area. Um, and just going through this process of creating the energy master plan helped our SEC to understand the overall energy consumption and to identify ways of contributing to making the energy transition and decisions about the energy transition as democratic and participatory within the local area as much as possible. Um, so this slide is again from our energy master plan and it highlights really the significant potential for energy savings for community members. Um, across those 4,000 homes in the community. And it also highlights the key challenge of the significant cost of investment for efficiency and renewables upgrades and starts to think about a few ways of overcoming that challenge um, in terms of sharing information on planning for refurbishment and engaging local interest and building visible demonstration projects that can all help to increase the appetite and interest in the community for, for carrying out um, these bigger energy retrofits. So one of the benefits um, for me of being an SEC has happened um, when, the, when the community has started to come together to produce its own renewable energy and um, for me, it's just been really great to participate in these tangible small projects. 
So this slide is showing um, some of the projects that um, Rings End SEC completed as part of our 2019 communities grant when we worked with the various partners to carry out lighting, heating, and insulation upgrades. And we also, um, that grant also helped to install some solar photovoltaic panels. And this photo here is showing the solar PV installation at the Fair Play Cafe on York Road in Rings End. And that installation actually just took two days. And the cafe owner and the director of the Anchorage project, Joe Donnelly, he was really excited about amplifying the impact of the project. So he installed one of these electronic visualization boards inside the cafe um, at the same time that the solar PV was installed outside. And so the board is connected, the board inside is connected to the solar PV outside. And Joe positioned the, the board um, right next to the cafe's cash register. So at the same time as cafe users are ordering their their coffee, they can see how renewables are helping to, to power the cafe and making their, contributing to making their cuppa. And this has actually been a really strong talking piece in the cafe, sparking casual conversations about energy use among, the, among people locally. And the cafe is continuing to develop itself as a sustainability demonstration project, really emphasizing the benefits of the local economy and community energy. So this slide um, is showing the projects that we're currently working on. So building on the success of the 2019 projects, we put forward a communities grant um, for this year and in 2021, um, our application um, has been provisionally accepted to, to retrofit four commercial and two domestic sites. Um, and the works are mainly associated with um, a suite of energy management and heating controls and the domestic retrofits will bring the houses up to at least a Burr B2 standard. So the, the commercial projects are actually, um, they're all, they're, they're several sports clubs, including Clanagale GAA Club, um, who's getting LED floodlights with lighting controls and heating controls and smart metering. The Railway Union Sports Club is installing LED floodlights as well. Um, also getting an energy management information system and they are replacing their petrol powered mower with an electric one. And then the Lansdowne Lawn Tennis Club is installing lighting controls and energy management information system. And as well, over the summer, the SEC is considering the option of forming as a cooperative organization. So that was one of the opportunities that came out of the energy master plan in the, in the register of opportunities. So, so we're really kind of just starting, um, we're still at the beginning of starting to realize what is possible and we're looking forward to building on what we've done. So feel free to give us a follow on social media if you like, and um, if there's any questions, I'm happy to, to talk about them in the Q&A. And thanks so much for listening. Thanks, Megan, that's great. It's fabulous. Uh, I, I think that, that idea in the coffee shop of trying to engage people with their actual, you know, real-time energy use is, is, is where the stories for this come. And, you know, it is all about stories. People change behavior when they feel that their communities are changing with them. It's, it's all about that, you know. So it's, it's great that you're, you're dealing with it at that human level. And we need to remember this is a human journey, you know. It's, energy emissions are coming from people. So we need to think about people and how we actually engage with them. So... Folks, that's our, that's our talks for tonight. I hope it's given you some insights. There's been some good, lively conversations going on in the chat there. Um, and some of the points that have been kind of looked at, um, if, you, if you look back over the chat, there are questions that have been specifically answered. Um, so I just need to tease out these a little bit, which ones um, we might look at. Um, Suzanne, do you have any advice for me on that? I'm just looking through the questions. Or there are some people who have made some raise their hands as well, looking to make some some points so we Hi. can fit those in as well. Yeah. Hi, Gavin. Yeah. So there's a question that's come in that hasn't been answered. So I think it might be good to start with that. That comes in from Sarah Riley, and it's a good question. What percentage of the cost of the works do SECs uh, generally receive? Um, so Gavin, I don't know if you want to take that one or field it out to Julie. Julie, I'd say if she's still here. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I wasn't able to type fast enough. <laughs> So, uh, Sarah, it's a mix. So, um, 
like Megan was saying, they did the BEC grant, so they would have got 35% for the homes that they upgraded, so 35% of the cost. Then it's 30% for commercial buildings, 50% for community buildings, and 80% grant for fuel poverty homes. So it's a, it's a mixed bag. <laughs> Yeah, again, like the, the real strength of this, uh, of the SEC program is that, you know, your communities are embarking on finding this kind of information out. I mean, the SEC is the perfect place for a community to find out about grants, to find about, you know, about how something is done. Um, it's about bringing all this together into one place, you know. So the SEC is the vehicle for communities to build their energy knowledge. They're almost like, it's like a vocabulary. So it's, it's really an important place for that. So thanks, Julie. Um, could a street be made of just two households? Now, this is a, this is a, this is you know, yeah, it's it's a difficult one to answer, Julie. There are pre precise answers to this, I think, aren't there? It can't be one building, um, and yet maybe a block of apartments, you know, could be something that would pass as a community or a street, a village. So maybe again, maybe you could give us those definitions as well or, or some, some guidance on what is a community. Sure, no worries. So two households wouldn't be enough. It, you could start with two and stay on the learn plan of your journey and try get more of your neighbors on, involved and, you know, build that bit of your community up to get more people interested before you would move on to the plan where we would fund you for your energy master plan. Ideally, we wouldn't um, fund someone for just two households. Um, it wouldn't be perceived as good value for money. Um, we would want you to go back and do more work in the community to get people on board before we would move to that stage. And that is, that's, that's, that's very important because I think it, is, it does have to be at scale here. You know, so it is important that we kind of build the communities up, and that's what mentors are here to do. So, you know, our role is to to help those two houses to kind of stretch their wings and 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 find more people to join with them. So, those two houses could be part of a residents association, you know, and then Absolutely. reach out to the residents association, bring them on, and you know. So that's how that's how we build a viable SEC. Can a community sports facility apply on their own? Um, is that on your own, as in without a local authority partner, or is that on your own without being part of an SEC? Um, so, Carrie, would you have some guidance on that? Maybe you could just maybe put a little bit into the, the chat with regards to your question. Certainly, there are grants available to individuals. Uh, they, they are, that is a pathway that groups can take, but um, the SEC program is really about aggregating uh, communities and, and projects together so that we do them in larger scale. So we have, um, I think we've kind of covered a lot of the questions, unless there's anything, we'd like to maybe open the mic. Um, Declan, me and yeah. would uh, you like to have anything to say? Yeah, I would. First of all, thanks for the presentation. I'm in contact with three of these groups already in my area, in the Cabraglass Nevin Ward of Dublin City. Um, this is really important, and I think it's good. Um, I really think, though, the issue of the 20 grand and having to find someone Obviously, it would be ideal if all the councils could just, you know, back that. But what would be more ideal is if the SEAI would actually change the policy and pay up front or give a voucher or do something like that, because it's a huge hurdle. And especially for more disadvantaged areas, you know, it's hugely off-putting. So I think, obviously, I'm going to do my bit to encourage this as much as possible. But I think that bit of feedback needs to go back uphill to the SEAI that, you know, if you want more people involved in this program, you need to get rid of that hurdle and make it as simple as possible. Uh, secondly, could I just get examples of exactly what projects are and aren't um, kind of available for funding or, you know, what, I suppose just maybe a bit more on the criteria for what the funding actually does and doesn't cover would be good. And a few examples of maybe more, you know, so we get an idea of the range of things it actually does cover. Thanks. Yeah, sure. I don't mind taking that one, Gavin, if you want. That's fine, Julia. Yeah, so Jacqueline, we do get that a lot about um, why can't we fund communities up first? And it, it is a, a decision by senior management in SEI that we don't. 
um, we have looked into it and what happens if we do that is that we become the procurers so we would have a list of people so you would lose that local connection people are hiring and procuring people in their local area to do this work under the energy master plan yes it is work for the communities to procure this but they get to keep the skills and the knowledge local if SEI fund um, up front it means we do the procurement and we assign from a list so you could be in Dublin and getting someone from Mayo doing your energy master plan because it would have to be from a framework that we've agreed already um, on the second bit on the grants that are offered so for homes it's all about getting to a B2 so that is your insulation measures and um, so internal insulation external insulation attic floor insulation doors and windows um, it also includes any of your heating systems, so upgrading to a heat pump. Um, it does not include boilers. We don't fund any fossil fuels. Heating controls, so just zoning your home, upstairs, downstairs. Um, what else do we have? Ventilation as well. If you want to move to a mechanically ventilated home or if you just want to have natural ventilation, we fund that. Um, from the business side, it's broader as well. So say um, Megan was mentioning they're getting the lighting done on the GA pitches um, so it's, it's a broad range but it's always focused on energy efficiency and renewables. And Declan just in response to your comment there this is what we are doing now with our lead partner process so the local authority is bridging that finance for the communities so they don't have to put the money you know their money up front so you have in Dublin City now a process so again if there are communities looking to do that your local authority can help them, you know, so there is that, you know, that that challenge doesn't really need to go up the up the, the path anymore. We have it covered at a local authority level. Um, we have a question from Carrie Smith. Would you like to, to speak to us, please? Um, thanks very much. And thanks for answering my question there in the chat um, about the street making of um, two households. And just following on from my other question, it was really um, about a community sports facility um, applying on their own, or do they have to be a part of a group? Because um, in Megan's contribution, she was saying about the tennis club and um, the railway club that they um, are getting work done, but was that because because it was part of that group. Um, just that some clubs are quite isolated. Um, they wouldn't necessarily have, uh, you know, have any other clubs near them um, or, or community facilities. And the other question then um, is regarding, um, do these, uh, do you have to be owner occupied? Um, you, you mentioned um, those who, I think it was um, Judy mentioned about the, the poverty and 80% funding. And it does that include people that are who are renting from the council or tenants of the council, are, are people who um, are renting privately that they may qualify for um, for the eighty percent if they were to come together and form. Well, maybe I'll just Thank mention the, the first one around the clubs. Yes, uh, anyone can go ahead and do a, a project on their own. Um, and that is a pathway for people to take. But let's remember, you know, a club is also made up of its members. And all those members have homes and, you know, they have neighbours. So what has happened in Rings End is that they have taken the community approach. So, you know, we get a double benefit out of this. We actually build social and community capital by communities trying to work together rather than all of us doing it individually. And we're never really going to achieve the targets that have been set, you know, nationally to reduce our emissions if we just do it on a piece by piece, single by, you know, house by house basis. We really do need to aggregate this work. So this really is what the SEC program is attempting to do, is to bring those clubs and their members and their houses and their neighbours and their residents associations and their tidy towns committees and their businesses and hotels to see how they can work together. And you as networkers in your communities and in your constituencies really have a role to play in trying to knit that together. With regards to the owner occupier, Julie, would you give us a sense on the rented uh, situation with regards to it? Yes, sure. So SEI has um, what Megan went through, which is the better energy community. And I said the 80% there. So you have to have owned that house, but be in receipt of, oh, there's a list of things. It's single parent, fuel uh, poverty allowance, um, 
there's a list of them. I don't remember them off the top of my head. Apologies, but they're they're on our website. Um, but you do have to own the home, and you have to. It has to have been built before 2006. And then we also have another scheme called Warmer Home Scheme. So this is something you can apply to, and you get 100% funding for your home. And it's the same criteria: you have to own the home you're in. If you're in a local authority home and you're renting it, we have a scheme for that where the local authorities come to SEI on your behalf to do the work. Um, so that is still open, I believe, for the local authorities to come in to get that done. And then was there another question? No, I think the rental, the rental one is, 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 I think that has, that is, you know, that is a difficulty. All right. I mean, I think getting people to, yeah. to, to, do up their houses when they're renting is probably it's not their top priority so yeah that is a challenge yeah so what we find it really challenging in SEI is that it's um you know the incentive effect like if you're renting you can't do the work on the house because you don't own it the landlord may not want to do the work because they don't see the benefit of it because they're not seeing the reduced bills because you're paying the bills because you're renting it so you know it, we've really encouraged any ideas on you know how to come you know find a solution crack, for that crack the, yeah. absolutely, absolutely crack that nutty. Yeah. so there's a job for people <laughs> <laughs> um we have a question um from i think sarah riley she'd like to hear me um yeah just 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 a quick one, and I suppose it's follow up on a comment that Caroline Corrigan made in relation to having a, um, a number of expression of interest in relation to SECs. Um, I just want to know prior to the, I suppose you, you set it out in the learn plan do, prior to the learn section, is there a certain level of formalization that the group needs to have in order to apply to be part of the SEC? Does it need to be a formalized group or body? No. They, they come in all shapes and sizes. So really, no, there isn't. I mean, again, the application process with SEAI is relatively simple. SEAI makes the call really at that stage, you know, whether the group, but there's no, there's no really challenging hurdles on the application to join the network. Um, uh, so really, it's a very broad, broad kind of definition to what gets you into the learn phase. And once you're in at a learn phase, you have access to somebody like me or the list of mentors that I introduced you to earlier, a full day of their skill and experience in being able to take that next step to plan. So that's really, you know, a very valuable first uh, resource. I think that the mentors are a really critical part in this program and the, the, the sort of the insights that they can offer communities to take the next step. We have a question, Joe Costello. you're on mute Joe. Oh yeah sorry about that. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, I missed the first 20 minutes but there was a lot of good material in the next 40 minutes. Um, my question really and you were just referring to it there Gavin that's let's say uh, there's the Dublin is full of communities it's full of resident association tenants association is little networks of various descriptions, tidy towns and so on. So if at the very early stage before making any application, is there a team of people or advisors that could be called on, let's say a member of a resident association would like to arrange in a Zoom meeting uh, and invite somebody to come along from Kodima or for, from SEAI to come along and talk about it before any decision would be made. And secondly, what is your ideal community that has that you think works out best in terms of the community makeup? Thank you. Uh, thanks, Joe. Um, very helpful. Um, yes. So, a community, as I said, in the because maybe we just preempted that that answer in the in the earlier question that I uh, the answer that I gave. A community joins the network. So, that's how we hear about them. You know, I suppose as you said, there are communities everywhere. And what we're looking for people is to go to the SEAI website to sign up and make themselves known that they're interested in taking this journey. As soon as they do that, their mentor is notified and the, not the mentor gets in touch with them and says, hello, would you like to have that Zoom meeting that you just described? And we'll tell you and we'll talk about what it is we might do next. So that is the first point of engagement. There's a, an expert, an experienced person who will ring them up and arrange to have a chat and see how they're going to develop them 
their, their, their community further. Um, your second point, uh, Joe, uh, sorry, I've just, it slipped my memory, but it was, you're still muted there. I was just wondering what, uh, in your experience, would be the Oh, the ideal, ideal community. community or the ideal yeah. size. Of the ideal, yeah, that, that's, that is, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, I, they come in lots of different shapes. When I think nationally, and Julie can correct me on this, but I think the nationally tidy towns have made up a huge proportion of them, I think. So that is where they're kind of coming from, which is a, you know, that, that has a, a double benefit. Uh, the tidy towns are looking to kind of improve their sustainability profile, but they also have a great, sort of anchor in, in towns and communities throughout the country. So they're really well established. So those vehicles have been proving to be quite successful for a sort of a seedbed, a pipeline for communities. I think in, in, a, in an urban area, strong residence associations, you know, that would have a lot of similar houses could be really good um, SECs, you know, so that could be a model. Um, and maybe similarly apartment blocks. Uh, you know, there's, a, I think there's, my experience in this, there's definitely a difference between urban and rural communities. You know, they, they do, there would be, I, sp I suppose it's just the nature of, you know, you know yourself, the nature of community in an urban setting is slightly different. <coughs> so um, there, 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 there hasn't been a, a really, um, I suppose, anything defining them, but I think it's a strong steering committee you know, a strong group of people who know how to work well together, have a unified idea as to what it is they want to do within their community, but also have a good reach to the broader stakeholders involved. So, you know, people like yourself, you know, the elected representatives, the business owners, the, 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 the clubs and the, the community groups, the, you know, people who can reach out and, and stretch that net, you know, that's what makes a strong SEC. So, um, folks, we're kind of 10 or 15 minutes over time. Um, thanks for sticking with us. I think we've kind of answered questions. Um, there's nothing jumping out. Oh, Dennis O'Callaghan has one final question, if we'd just like to take that one. Thank you very much, um, Gavin. Um, and I'll be, I'll be quite uh, brief because I put it in the chat and the reply I got, it still didn't put a sort of a finality to it. Any of these projects, as you probably know, um, what is the uh, legal imposition on either the community who would be um, quite wary of, um, of um, any such legal implication? All of these projects where you're into procurement carries a legal risk. And I suppose what I'm trying to establish, there are three parties, the SEAI, the local authority or the community, um, who, who is legally responsible for the delivery of the project, the pro okay. procurement and delivery? Okay, well, Thanks. Dennis, Dennis, just in response to that, I think we need to see this, first of all, is, is there's a stepwise approach to this, okay? So what we're talking about is a community growing as they gain experience. So we're not dumping communities into complicated, and in fact, our job is to protect them from that. We do not want this to go wrong, where communities end up, you know, with egg on their face and everyone going, oh God, that was a disaster. That is not where this program is headed. So what we need to do is we start off at Learn where they find out a bit. They then do this energy master plan. That's dipping their toe in the water. What has happened in Ring's End, you know, learning about their energy picture. There's no real risk in that at all. I mean, it, there's, there's no exposure, especially if they're with their local authority, the cost is covered up front, provided they do the energy master plan and they put in the work and they get it done. That's a, that's a learning experience. And then they're at the stage where they might consider doing projects. And at that stage, there is, of course, perhaps a bit more risk because they are starting to look at actual projects, things could go wrong. But again, with the experience of learn and plan, and with mentors' help and with growing understanding of the whole energy uh, business, we would really be about backing the communities that know how to do it. You know, we're not certainly sending them off over the trenches to, into no man's land without an understanding of where they're going. So it's minimizing that risk at each step as a community moves through the process. Okay, folks, we're going to, 
Uh, oh yes, we'd like to take a photograph, that's okay. So maybe we could turn off our, our presentation and, and go to a, a, a gallery picture if everyone's up for that. Um, Suzanne, you can do that your end, I presume, and we'll all uh, smile and um, turn on your cameras. It would be great. Great stuff, yeah. We all get our best smiles out. I'll just do it now. Great to see so many people attending this evening as well. So we obviously want to brag about it on social media. So if you feel like giving a wave. <laughs> yeah, I'll do one more just to be sure. Great stuff. All done. Very easy. <laughs> thanks. Thanks very much to everyone uh, for coming along. I hope it has been of value to us. As I say, there are people in your local authority who know more about this um, and they can put us in touch with, you, you know, put, put you in touch with us. Or, so it's about building that relationship and we look forward to working with you going forward. Thanks again for attending. Thank, thank you very you much for the presentation, guys. Thank you. It's really useful. Thanks, thanks all. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.